Suppose you have the need to find out if a trinomial can be factored using slip and slide. Maybe you've already gone for the greatest common factor, and you're left with something, and you just haven't been able to find those numbers quite yet that made it work. Or perhaps the numbers are huge, and instead of sitting there all day trying different combinations, you're hoping to determine, well, is it at least factorable, or would I be wasting my time trying to find it because it doesn't exist? We can use a tool called the discriminant. The discriminant will answer this question for us. So these first couple of examples are not in your notes packet. Just follow along, pay close attention, so you have the general idea of how to work with the discriminant. The first thing we do is identify the value a, value b, and value c. a is the number in front of the x squared, 3. b is the number in front of the x, 5 and c is the number off at the end, negative 1. We're going to plug these into the formula b squared minus 4ac. That formula is for the discriminant. We take these values from our a, b, and c, plug them in, and let's see what happens. Now, here's the trick. Here's what I'm hoping to find out. If b squared minus 4ac, when I put those numbers in, if the result is a positive perfect square, like 36, 25, 9, 1, 0, any positive perfect square, then you can use slip and slide. If the result is not a positive perfect square, anything negative or anything that's not a perfect square, slip and slide is not going to work. In our example here, we put those numbers into our calculator and we found out that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is 37. Since it's not a perfect square, we cannot use slip and slide. And so you can look for a greatest common factor, but there's not much else you can do there. How about if we have a different one, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3? Once again, we identified a, b, and c, and we plugged those into the formula b squared minus 4ac put that into the calculator, and I end up with 25. 25 is a positive perfect square, therefore you can use slip and slide to factor this. And in fact, my factors will be x plus 3 and 2x plus 1, once you finish using slip and slide. And so now let's take a look at a couple of examples together to work through this process. We want to know if the expression x squared plus 3x plus 10 can be factored using slip and slide. Well, the first thing we always look for, is there a greatest common factor? No, we don't have a greatest common factor. Now, can we use slip and slide? Well, we identify the a, b, and c value. a is 1, b is 3, c is 10. Then we plug them into our formula, b squared minus 4ac. That's a formula you're going to want to know, and so each time you write it down, it'll help you remember it just a little bit better. Now we plug the numbers in. 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10, and we end up with negative 31. Negative 31 is not a positive perfect square, and so we cannot use slip and slide to factor this expression. In example two, we have x squared plus 2x minus 4. I could go ahead and try to factor this using slip and slide. The numbers aren't very big. But suppose I wanted to test just to be sure. Well, once again, I can identify the a, b, and c, plug into the formula b squared minus 4ac, and see if it's a positive perfect square. Please try this example now. Please pause the video and come on back when you're done. Let's see how you did a is 1, b is 2, c is negative 4. I plug the numbers into b squared minus 4ac, the formula for the discriminant, and the number came out to be 20. Because 20 is not a positive perfect square, you cannot factor using slip and slide. You want to try one where it works? All right, well, let's try example 3. The expression 10x squared minus 9x plus 2. Again, the numbers aren't very large. You could probably just go right ahead and, and find them, see if the factors exist. But let's suppose we want to test it. Let's use the discriminant. Please pause the video here, and then come on back when you're finished. 
And here we go, A is 10, B is negative 9, C is 2. We plug those in, we get the number 1. 1 is a positive perfect square. Since it's a perfect square, we can use slip and slide. And in fact, when I do that, I end up with something that looks like this, with the factors 5x minus 2 and 2x plus 1. There are three more examples in the notes packet. I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and try another one, um, or perhaps two if you feel like you need a little more practice. Please pause the video here, try a problem or two, then I'll show you the answers. Number four, we cannot use slip and slide. The discriminant was 1033, which is not a perfect square. Number five, the discriminant was 289. 289 is a perfect square, so I can use slip and slide. Number six, the discriminant was 56, and 56 is not a perfect square, so I cannot use the discriminant. So here's what we need to know. If you ever have a trinomial that's quadratic, something x squared plus something x plus something, then all you have to do is use b squared minus 4ac it will tell you if you can factor that using slip and slide or not. So if you ever get stuck, here's a nice tool. It may tell you that there is no way to factor whatever you're working with. This is everything you need to know about working with the discriminant in order to determine the factorability of a quadratic trinomial.